Sevens, it's Helen here and that means it is time for your natural sciences lesson. What are we going to learn about today? Well today we're going to look at investigations with radiation. Remember thermal radiation is heat transfer via radiation. Let's remind ourselves what we've learned about radiation. We've learned that the earth gets warm and gets its heat energy radiated to it from the sun. We also know that if you were to put your hand next to a candle flame, you would also feel these waves of heat energy. Certainly, if you put it at the top of the candle flame, it would burn a lot more. But you do feel warmth being spread out sideways via radiation. So one of our ways in which heat energy is transferred is by this process known as radiation. And remember that it is different to conduction because it doesn't require objects to be touching. And it's different to convection because it doesn't require the movement of particles. Thermal radiation is heat energy transfer that spreads by waves, which we indicate radiation as waves, from a starting point, which is the sun or our flame there with a the candle. So that is what heat radiation is all about. We're going to investigate thermal radiation today. So, you are going to go for a wonderful game ride through the Kruger National Park and you have a choice of car to drive in. Now I have to tell you that it's a very, very hot day. Would you prefer to be a passenger in the white car? Or would you prefer to be the passenger in the black car? Remember what I told you, you're going to be traveling in this car. It's a hot day. You're going to be in the car looking for animals in the Kruger Park. And it's very, very hot. And you can't get out of the car either. So which car is it going to be? There's two cars waiting on your doorstep to take you away for this magical day. Which one do you get into? Well, we don't no, unless we have some evidence. So we're going to start with a question. There's where our investigation starts. Should we be traveling in the white car or the black car? Then our next step in making the right choice is to state a hypothesis. Your hypothesis could be one of two statements. You could say, I will drive in the white car because the white car will be cooler. Or you could say, I will travel in the black car because the black car will be cooler. Both of those statements are correct hypotheses at the beginning of an investigation. Remember what a hypothesis is. It's a testable guess. You're using kind of what you know already to make a suggestion of an answer. And your answer is, yes, let's go in the white car. Or maybe some of you are saying, no, no, let's go in the black car. The black car is going to be cooler. And how can we test this before we have to actually spend a whole day in that car? The scientific question out of this is, do different surfaces absorb radiation differently? So here we have a white surface, here we have a black surface. Do those two sur surfaces absorb that radiant heat energy? Do they absorb it the same or do they absorb it differently? So here is our investigation that we're going to do to decide which car we should go in. You are going to need a black 
paper bag. I'm writing our requirements here on the picture, but you could write it up here. You're going to need a white paper bag. And just out of interest, will a shiny car get hotter than a matte car? Will a polished car or a shiny car get hotter? Or would it actually be cooler? So we're also going to test shiny foil. So we've got a bag made out of foil or for example, tin foil or aluminium cooking foil. We're going to need three thermometers. And what we're going to do is, we're going to place our thermometers inside the bag. Before we place them in, we're going to read what the temperature is and record it. Place the thermometer in the bag. We're going to seal the bag. And then we're going to place our, our little tray with all our bags into the sun. And we're going to see what happens to the temperature. We had a starting temperature. We're going to see that at the end of some time, what is our end temperature going to be? And that is going to tell us which color is going to be absorbing the heat energy the most. So if we had a black car, if we had a white car, if we had a very shiny car, or if we had a very matte or dull car, what would our situation be if we were locked inside that car for a long time for the day? What is our hypothesis? Now your hypothesis is going to be whatever you decide. Which one is going to show us the lowest temperature? And which one is going to show us the highest temperature. That's basically what we're investigating. So your hypothesis, that's your investigation question, your hypothesis could be black will be the lowest temperature, followed by white, and the hottest one will be the foil. That is one way of making a hypothesis. You could say the foil is going to be the lowest, followed by the black and then the white. It doesn't matter. You think about it and you make a prediction based on your experience and what you know now, make a prediction. And then we set that prediction aside. We place our thermometers in, we take their readings and we start our investigation. In this investigation, what is the independent variable? Goodness, do you remember that the independent variable is controlled by the investigator? I am controlling the investigator. I am the investigator. I am controlling the independent variable. So in this case, what am I controlling? I am controlling the surface that is going to be exposed to radiation. I am controlling the color of the absorptive surface, whether it is black I've chosen white and I've chosen foil. You could have chosen envelopes or bags of any color and you can do this with red, green and blue if you wanted to. But that is what I am in charge of. That is what I can control. What is the dependent variable? And the dependent variable is what am I going to measure? And my dependent variable is going to be temperature. If the black bag 
absorbs the most amount of radiation, it's going to get hotter. If the black bag absorbs less radiation, it's going to be cooler. So what do I start out with not knowing? I start out not knowing the temperature. So therefore, that is what I'm going to measure. That is my dependent variable because the temperature is dependent on the color of the bag. What variables must be controlled? Remember when we do a scientific investigation, everything, all of our variables must be the same. They must be controlled. We only vary one variable. And in this case, we can see that we are varying color of the bag that we've placed the thermometer in. But everything else has to be the same. Do you see that the size, let's write it up here, the size of my bags is the same. They're all going to be placed in the same place. We're not going to put one bag in the shade and one bag in the sun. We're going to keep our variables identical. They're going to be kept for the same amount of time in the sun. So we are going to control all these other variables very carefully. What will happen? Now, of course, we are not outside. I cannot expose three bags to sunshine for you. I would love you to try this investigation yourself if you can. But you may not have three thermometers because those are expensive pieces of equipment. So what you can do is you can take three plastic bags and you can put five ice blocks in the plastic bags and you have three of them and you put one of the plastic bags in the foil bag, one in the white and one in the black. And you could see how much of that ice melted, let's say if we exposed all three bags for 10 minutes to the sunshine. So although you won't have actual, what we call quantitative information, you won't have numbers of temperature, you won't say that the black bag rose to 36 degrees C, you won't have that quantitative information, but you will be able to describe from the way in which the ice melts what will happen. So I'd love you to do this investigation yourself. And I'm going to tell you what you should expect to see. The temperature inside the black bag is the highest. The temperature inside the foil bag is the lowest. And much less than the black, but a little bit more than the foil is our white bag where the temperature will be in between the two. What can we conclude? Well, we can conclude that a black surface absorbs more radiation. A foil surface, in fact, reflects the radiation so it becomes cooler. And white also reflects the radiation, and so it becomes cooler than the black one, but not as cool as the foil. So you're off for your day in the Kruger Park. Which car are you going to get into? They've both pulled up outside your house. I hope that you are running for the white car and making sure that it's nice and shiny, that it's going to reflect as much heat as possible back to the environment and you're not going to be stuck sweating inside the black car. So do different surfaces absorb radiation differently? Absolutely. And that is our investigation. Please try it outside in your garden with some ice cubes so that you can see that although you don't have temperatures, things inside a black container will, ice inside a black container will melt quicker than the ice inside the foil or the white container. That's it for today. I'll see you again next time, grade sevens. 
Goodbye.